Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is Little Bookish Teacher. Today I'm going to be sharing some picture books that you can use with students for Anzac Day. Anzac Day takes place on the 25th of April here in Australia and it is a national day of remembrance for Australian and New Zealanders that broadly commemorates soldiers from both countries who have served in wars and conflicts across the years. It originally came about to commemorate the soldiers who served at Gallipoli in World War One and has since been broadened to a more general day. So today I have two categories of books. I have ones that are geared at slightly younger audiences which would be perfect for Foundation Year 1, Year 2 or Kinder to Year 2 and ones that are for slightly older audiences. Of course you can use them across those age categories but some of them are more text heavy and focus on more of the details of World War One, so they may not necessarily be appropriate for younger readers but I thought I would share a list as Anzac Day is coming up this week and particularly here in Victoria students will be at school on the 24th where typically most schools will have some kind of Anzac service and then students may or may not be participating in Anzac service on the public holiday on the 25th. Without further ado we're going to talk about the books. I'm going to start off with picture books that would be more suitable for younger readers. I've used these many many times in my classroom. I think I've mentioned before I spent most of my time teaching foundation or prep or kinder it's the first year of formal schooling, so these books are really familiar to me. The first one is Anzac Ted. This is by Belinda Lansbury, and this is a really great gentle story that is about a young child who is talking about Anzac Ted, who is a family heirloom toy, who is beat up and rough around the edges, and when they take Anzac Ted to school, he doesn't win best show and tell toy because he's scary and old and, you know, one of those toys that has been in the family for generations, and as it turns out, Anzac Ted belonged to his grandfather and his grandfather took Anzac Ted to war with him. And so there is this rich history and Anzac Ted is something that is incredibly important to this family. This does talk about the conflict but it doesn't go into detail and while it does show imagery of Anzac Ted and the grandfather overseas it doesn't actually show the conflict. That does make it easier to share with younger readers but it does open a really great discussion and there are some really great activities that you can do with Anzac Ted. The classes that I've had we've made Anzac Ted and had a really really rich discussion. Another really popular one is My Granddad Marches on Anzac Day by Katrina Hoy and Benjamin Johnson. Again this is another pretty gentle picture book that does talk about Anzac Day from the perspective of a grandchild marching with their grandfather at the Anzac Day parade. Its purpose is mainly to explore what Anzac Day is, the significance of it, and it puts it into language that a child can understand. This one has really great illustrations in it. While there are a few scenes where you actually see soldiers at war, it is mostly about the remembrance of friends past. It's really about how this is a day of reflection. So this is another one that I've used very, very often. And another one for younger readers, or that you could use with younger readers, I suppose, is Anzac Day Parade. Now this one I would probably pick your audience. This is probably more a one-two book rather than a, a foundation one. Mostly because this is a about a young boy who is at an Anzac Day parade and meets an older gentleman there and starts asking him questions and they're the innocent kind of questions that a child would ask but what they do is that they open up memories for the veteran and and while the questions might seem innocent the memories that come up are not necessarily so and it's again another book on re of reflection but it is also about the importance of remembering. There's a lot of symbology in this book which is great to share with kids. It is done in a beautiful watercolour style the present day is in the brighter watercolours whereas the past the memories are done in sort of a muted colour palette so this is another really great one for discussion and then moving into some picture books that would be for older readers so years three and up and again you would have to read through these books yourselves and decide whether or not the content is appropriate for your particular cohort because no cohort or, or class of students is ever the same so just because you used a book with one year level in a previous year doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be appropriate for the same year level the following year so that's always important to keep in mind because as teachers or as parents we know the students or the children that we are working with so we want to make sure that we're picking a book that is going to be the best fit for the class. So there is One Minute Silence by David Metzenthan and Michael Camilleri and this one is definitely for older audiences. It is a book that challenges people to think about and put themselves in the shoes of soldiers from both sides of conflict during the one minute of silence that we observe during the Anzac Day service. Something that I really liked about this particular book, obviously these are students in a class and so this is one of the very first pages in the book and you can see that not everyone's paying attention, people are you know particularly interested and as the lesson goes on and they're challenged to consider various scenarios and situations that young men and women who've been sent into conflict zones are forced to endure. You begin to see a change in the way that these students behave in the classroom which is encapsulated at the end of the book and the final page 
where we see, you know, no one's sleeping anymore and people are actually sitting up and paying attention. All the illustrations are in a monochrome style. It is a much heavier book than a lot of these other ones, but well worth checking out. There is also The Last Anzac by Gordon Winch and illustrated by Harriet Bailey. And this is based off a true story of a young boy who went to visit the last living Anzac in 2001. So the last living Anzac's name was Alec Campbell and he died, I think in 2002. Alec enlisted during World War I at the age of 16 by lying and saying that he was 18 years old. He became ill during the conflict and was sent home at 17 as a veteran. And so he lived until he was 103 and this young boy had the opportunity to go to Tasmania to meet him and to hear his story. And this book is a really unique perspective on the conflict at Gallipoli through the eyes of someone who was there. And it's a really beautiful book to read. There is Gallipoli by Kerry Greenwood and Annie White. This is a story about two friends who went off to the war together, but were separated by injury and by further wars and conflicts. This one is really text heavy. It is a narrative, but it does actually go into some of the details of the history at Gallipoli that you can then use to unpack sort of the history of World War One. There's also A Day to Remember by Jackie French and illustrated by Mark Wilson. This one does have sort of a narrative thread through it, but it is mostly a nonfiction text that explores the history of Anzac Day itself through the years and through various conflicts that were happening on April 25th over the years. So each double page spread features a different year in history and the conflicts that Australian and New Zealand soldiers might have been involved in during those years. So it is looking through those Anzac traditions and history in quite a text heavy book that is definitely suitable for older readers. So yes, this is a really great one. It's great for charting a timeline as well through Australia's history and Australia's involvement in conflicts and peacekeeping efforts since World War One, And it does have a really gorgeous but poignant illustration style. And the last one, you would probably need to decide the youngest age group that you could read this book to. It kind of crosses both categories. And this one also is not specifically Anzac Day related. It is more about reflecting on war and peacekeeping efforts in Australia's history. So it could be used on Anzac Day or it could be used for Remembrance Day. In November. So this looks at a family who is attending a memorial service for either Anzac or Remembrance Day and juxtaposes that with soldiers who are at war. So on one side of the page you have the family, the other side you have a reflection on what could have been happening during any kind of conflict. The conflicts or peacekeeping efforts that are shown are not just from the past, they are contemporary peacekeeping efforts as well. And at the very back of the book it also has some information about various wars and peacekeeping efforts that Australian soldiers have been involved in throughout time. So this one is a little bit more informative. It is an incredibly gorgeous book. I love the watercolour illustrations in this one and I love that it also includes that blend of history and also what students would be hearing about today. Those are some books that you can read during Anzac Day. They're all very thought-provoking and very good for reflection. I will leave links to all of them down below if you would like to find out more information about them. If you have any other recommendations feel free to leave them down below otherwise feel free to leave a teddy bear emoji to let me know that you're here i hope that wherever you are in the world you're staying safe and healthy and i'll see you in my next video thanks so much for watching bye everyone